We are live. What's going on, good people? You know who it is and what it be. This is Rob P. NID Housing Counseling Agency here with you today for an Ask a Counselor workshop. So this is the first one of the year. I'm looking to do this every first Wednesday where I come before you because I get a lot of questions throughout the, throughout the month. People ask me questions and these questions I tend to get similar questions over and over again. So this is an opportunity for me to, to share some of the information that I give to people every day, you know, in one condensed format. So if you're in the building right now, do me a favor, comment. First and foremost, comment. Let me know you're in the building because don't I don't want to be here talking to myself. That's boring, right? Two, two, share this. I mean, now you can't share it because this is exclusively for the first time Home Buyers Club Reloaded. But with that being said, if you find value in this in this live, tech somebody that you know on Facebook, somebody that you talk to about moving, make sure you add them to the group. Add them to the group because this is a movement and it's a movement about wealth building. It's a, it's a movement about liberation. It's a movement about helping people live the lives that God intended them to live by helping them build wealth that allows them to, um, to do what they want to do ultimately that allows them to be secure that allows them to be uh supported look man my technology acting crazy facebook user i don't know who facebook user is but it is what it is i love you if you got questions put them in the chat okay so for th those of you that don't know i'm rob pasker i'm the certified branch office manager of nid housing counseling agency which is a hud certified uh housing counseling agency that provides housing education we help people in the homes. We help people keep their homes. We help people maintain their homes. We help people rent. Um, and our programs are HUD certified. So if you spend six hours with our programming between the one-on-one -on -one counseling session and our monthly home buyer education program, you'll get your certificate that you can use to uh, get the down payment assistance that, that you qualify for. So with that being said, you know, it's a, it's, this is a, it's, I love what I do because what I'm doing is I'm helping families, you know, build wealth. In which we just talked about we just talked about rock light in the building hold on let me open it up on my let me open it up one time before i get into these questions if you got questions send them to me send me the questions because this is about y'all right now i don't do this for myself yeah i don't do this for myself so if you got questions put them in the chat here we go i can see i can see okay sherelle what up sherelle really real what's really good ashley hunt we got Ikea in the building. Kiki, do you love me? We got Cedric. What's up? What's up? But yeah, let's get into it. We got a good question. That's a really good question. Ashley Hunt. She said, I'm trying to apply for the first time home ownership program through the city. Where can I get the required counseling? Because the numbers I've called, one moved out the building a year, okay? And the other one, voicemail is full. Okay, peep game. This is what's going on. Yes, there's only two places that you can go in the city to get the certificate that you need to get the city of Toledo's Home at Last grant. So the Home at Last grant, for those of you that don't know, the city offers um, up to $7,500 grants for home buyers who qualify. And that, that qualification is based off of income. Um, for a household of three, if you make less than about $58,000 on paper, you'll qualify. You'll qualify to get this grant. Um, in order to get this grant, though, you have to go through a HUD certified housing counseling agency program, which is like the one that we provide here. So, Ashley Hunt, to answer your question, hit the link in my bio. Hit the link in my bio. That's, it's as simple as that. NID Lucas County, my organization, we offer that certification. Um, it's free. It consists of two parts. One part is a one-on-one -on -one counseling session where we'll break it down for you. We'll look at your income. We'll look at your expenses. We'll look at your debt. We'll look at your credit. And we'll put together a plan specifically tailor-made for you um, that'll put you in a position uh, to become a homeowner. And I mean, that includes um, telling you how much you qualify to purchase. That includes teaching you what you need to do to get your credit right. That includes putting together a strategy to pay down debt. Um, and it's I love what I do. I've been doing it for two years now as a housing counselor. And um, I've seen a lot of families go through the program and get their keys. Um, so there it is, NID Lucas County. Hit the link in the bio. What you want to do first and foremost is schedule a counseling session. The only thing, it's a free program. The only thing that I do ask is that you fill out the intake application that you will receive. 
You can fill it out online. It's editable. Get that in because without that intake application, I don't know what to tell you. You know, I, I need that information to give you the information that you need. And also, this is a HUD certified program, so we have to keep very meticulous records of the people that we work with. And then also every fourth, every fourth Saturday, we have our uh, home buyer education program, the workshop. And so that's a it's a it's a class from ten to three, uh, where we go over everything you need to know about becoming a homeowner and maintaining your asset once you get it. So it's a two-part program, nidlucascounty.com. You can sign up. Great question. Thank you for asking. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So who else? Who rocking with us, man? Who's rocking right now? Who rocking? We got seven people in the building. I appreciate y'all. It's Wednesday. Y'all could be doing anything. You could be doing anything in the world. Let me tell y'all, no question is a bad question. All questions are good questions. All right, so I'll just tell you a little bit about, you know, it's a lot. I could do this for days, y'all. I can just write. I'm like a walking encyclopedia when it comes to real estate, when it comes to finance, personal finance. And um, But I think for most people that are in this position right now that are looking to, to at least acquire, acquire property if they're having it, they don't understand the mortgage process. They don't understand what lenders look for. Um, but, you know, that's, that's, that's what I'm here to help with. So I'll give you just a quick synopsis, synopsis of what lenders look for. They're going to look at your income documents. Okay, do you get, are you self-employed or are you employed? If you're employed, it's simple. They're gonna look at your W-2s, two years of W-2s, two years tax returns, two months bank statements, two months pay stubs. Really simple if you're employed, all right? If you're self-employed, they're gonna look at two years of tax returns, specifically that Schedule C, the amount that you, that you claim as income. If you're looking to purchase property, you claim as much income as you can because at the end of the day, the more income you claim, the more that you can purchase. But keep in mind, if you do intend on using the down payment assistance programs that are out there, you need to be knowledgeable of the income guidelines because you might make you might make two hundred thousand, but if you only claim you know fifty eight thousand, you can still get the down payment assistance. So um, I'm telling you. Also, they're going to look at your profit and loss statements, up to two to three years of profit and loss statements for self-employed people. I recommend using QuickBooks to get that profit and loss statement. They're gonna look at your bank statements, two months of bank statements. They may even ask for a letter from your CPA saying that you pulling from your business funds will not interfere with your with your business. So it's pretty simple. On paper it's simple, right? It sounds simple, but actually of course, there's a lot to it, but we got some we got some good questions in here. Let me go ahead and um, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. Okay, we got another one. So, is it best to pay off your debt to clean up your credit? Because I have heard that doesn't really help. Mine is mostly student loans with a few medical bills. So here's the deal. All right, that's a really good question because. You know, does it help to build your credit to pay off debt? Honestly, no. <laughs> if anything, paying off debt can actually make your credit score go down, depending on if you're using installment or whether you're using um, or whether you're using revolving credit. So, you know, if, if you don't know, you have five different major factors that make up your credit report. And the third largest factor is going to be the age of those credit accounts. So if you have an, an installment account, such as a car note, um, you get a lump sum and you pay it down in installments. You get points. The older that account is, the more points you get. But when you pay off an installment loan, i.e. a car note, you lose, it closes, and you're going to lose all those points that you built up. That 15% of that, that those points, you're going to lose them because you closed the account. So actually paying off debt can lower your credit score. That's why I tell people that are looking to become homeowners, yeah, you want to actually have a mix of credit, have some revolving, have some installment, but you also want to be heavy on the revolving credit cards, lines of credit, trade lines, because they don't close. While we're on the subject, don't close a credit card. Just pay it down and be responsible. Because when you close that credit card, you lose all those points. You know, because I, you know, I, I use my own strategies. Um, I asked my mother to make me an authorized user on one of her credit cards that's about as old as me. So on my credit report, my A, I have an account that's about as old as me on my credit report. And um, that's really good for my credit score, y'all. So um, that's the thing about revolving accounts. You never have to close them if you be responsible. So, But here's on the flip side of that. On the flip side, though, 
when it comes to purchasing a home, when it comes to affordability, um, when it comes to affordability, every dollar that you're paying towards some debt is a dollar you can't put towards a house. So if you want to maximize your affordability, if you want to maximize how much home you can purchase, what you want to do is pay down debt. Because as, as prices rise, affordability goes down. So, you know, if you got a car note, you know, and that could stop you from getting the house that you that you will be happy with living in. So, you know, it's, 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 it's give and take, you know, what you got to do, what you got to do. But I would tell you, if you can afford to just get a home and then, you know, pay down your debt while you're in that home. And then on the next home, maybe five, six, seven years later, go get what you really want. That's what I recommend. So, yeah, there's it's, it's a it's a double edged sword. Paying off debt can make your credit score drop, but at the same time, if your debt's not paid off, it can limit how much home you can purchase. Great question. Thank you for asking that one. Also, in, in, in terms of, let's talk about really quickly while we're on, the, we're on the subject of credit, we're on the subject of debt and paying off debt, student loans and medical bills. Let's talk about how, when it comes to purchasing a home, how student loans and medical bills are calculated. So first and foremost, Student loans, they suck. I have student loans, you know, it's a necessary evil. Yes, a lot of us got that email that said that we are, um, got that email that said that we are approved for student loan forgiveness. No, <laughs> I'm not counting on it, y'all. There's too many politics involved. Um, but with that being said, we have to deal with student loans. So it really is gonna come down to which loan that you are applying for. Um, the most popular first time home buyer loan is the FHA loan. The FHA loan, what they do to calculate your, your student loan debt obligation is they look at your student loan total balance and they're gonna take a half a percentage, one half of a percentage of that total balance and count that towards your, your student loan debt obligation. So if you owe $50,000 in student loans and you're going with the FHA loan, they're going to go, that payment is going to be $250 because 1% of 50,000 is going to be 500. So a half a percentage is going to be 250 bucks. So that's 250 bucks that you won't be able to put towards a house if you're purchasing with an FHA loan, as well as a Freddie Mac or a Fannie Mae, which are both conventional loans, 3% conventional loans. Um, Aside from that, so with that being said, but some programs like the community mortgage program that a lot of my clients have are using where you get a, a house with no money down, no down payment, they calculate one full percent of your student loans. So that means when that fifty thousand dollar loan, you're gonna have your debt obligation is gonna be five hundred dollars. So, you know, it just depends on the loan. Something else to keep in mind though, and this is how a lot of people are getting around that, but you gotta weigh the scales. If you have a <clears throat> if you have a payment, like if you're on a payment plan for your student loans, the lender will use your payment plan uh, as your your loan obligation. But if you have uh, if you're on an income base and your income base is zero, they're going to use that one percent or half a percentage. So you might want to weigh the scales to see would it make sense to put yourself on a payment plan depending on your student loan amount, or would it make sense to just go with that half a percentage? Or full percentage but these are all things that I help people break down during my housing counseling sessions so it sounds deep because it is and there's a lot of variables involved but when you sit down with me for a housing counseling session we will literally break it down and you can look at your options and looking at your options and getting all the information that you need will help you make the best decision for you and your family which is that's what this ultimately is about knowledge is power but I define power as the ability to change. So by educating yourselves, you're empowering yourself to change your life. And you know, that's that's why I do it. Medical bills. Let's talk about medical bills. These are great, great content, great questions. Thank you for asking. And when, ask more questions, y'all, I'm here. Ask them, bring them. I'm gonna, go, I'm gonna, be, I'm gonna be on here as long as y'all on here. So uh, let's get it. Okay, medical bills. Again, it's gonna depend on the different type of loan. Different loans calculate medical bills differently. For instance, with the FHA loan, FHA loan will not even count your medical bills. Is the FHA my favorite loan? Far from it, it's far from my favorite loan for many different reasons, but at the same time, 
a lot of people use it. And so the best loan for you is going to be the loan that gives you the best opportunity, the best chance of becoming a homeowner. And so if you are someone that has a lot of medical bills that are unresolved, FHA may be the way to go because if you, again, if you go with a more restrictive loan, like a conventional loan, they're going to count those medical bills. In fact, you know, FHA will allow you to have uh, collections up to $1,000 on your credit report. There are some loans like that community mortgage that will not allow you to have. They won't allow you to have any, any, um, they won't allow you to have any student loans or yeah, no, no collection. So FHA tends to be more lenient when it comes to lending. It's a 3.5% down payment. Since we're on the topic, let me just explain why I try to have people go conventional versus FHA. When I say FHA, that is a loan that is insured by the Federal Housing Administration, meaning that lenders who give out FHA loans, they you're going to pay what's called mortgage insurance premium every month. That is insurance in the case that you default. You get foreclosed on, the lender's going to get their money either way it goes because the government is insuring them. With that being said, this, this MIP, or if it was conventional, it would be private mortgage insurance, PMI, you're going to pay that for the life of the loan with FHA versus a conventional loan. Most conventional loans, once you reach 20% equity or you pay off 20% of the loan, you will, um, that PMI goes away. So on a $100,000 house, that's like an extra 60, 70 bucks a month that you won't be paying. So if you can imagine, that gets expensive over the course of time if it never falls off. But like for instance, with that, with that zero down community mortgage, there is no PMI. Um, so there's a lot of in intricacies in regards to the loans. That's just one thing. Also, the government being, or the FHA loan being a government loan, the government's going to do an extra inspection when you use that loan. So if you find yourself in a multiple offer situation, meaning that you found a house that you loved, you better believe that about five other people love that house. So you got six other offers that you're competing against. The seller's going to go with the offer that gives these buyers the most money, or give the seller the most money in the fastest time with the least hassle. FHA might give them the most money, but it's going to take longer because they have the extra inspection, and it may be more hassle because if, if you got chipped or peeling paint anywhere in the house, exterior or interior, if you don't have GFCI outlets in the kitchen or bathrooms, um, if you got a crack in the window, they're not going to get that money until that's fixed. So a lot of sellers are like, I don't even want to look at FHA offers. Give me straight conventional. Because conventional loans, as long as the home is, is standing in safe order, it's going to go through, unlike FHA. But FHA is more lenient when it comes to lending standards. With an FHA loan, you can go as low, you can buy, get a loan with as low as a 500, although you, you will have to bring a lot of money down. Some lenders will go as low as a 580. I have a I have a lender here in Northwest Ohio that will loan an FHA loan uh, with a 600 middle credit score, and then if you qualify, they'll give you a $3,600 grant, and then if you qualify, you can get the money from the city at 7,500, and then if you buy a house in February or later in the year, it's going to drop again back in back in July, you can get another $2,500 grant on top of all of that. You know, so it's money out here and it's possible, y'all. It's possible. So let's get to another one. Okay, another good question. Do they look at Social Security income that you may get for a child with a disability? Yes, that counts as income. Bring your income documents. SSI, disability, child support. It all counts as income as long as you can prove it on, with a paper trail. So use it. There are plenty of people that use it. Section 8. If you're on Section 8, you can use your Section 8 voucher <clears throat> to pay your mortgage. You have to qualify to purchase a home first, but I've had clients that use their Section 8 vouchers to pay their mortgages to this day. It's a cheat code. It's a cheat code. I'm telling y'all, they're, they're building equity. They're building wealth. They're, they're benefiting from appreciation because they got Section 8 paying their mortgage, y'all. What is the two one buy down? That is not something that I can speak on right now because I'm not, I'm not too hip. I'm not too hip about the two one buy down. I, I have my strategies that I you know that I use for paying down debt, but when you start looking at like YouTubers and stuff, that gets a little different. <laughs> 
Okay, another one. We got some good ones. Hold on, here we go. I don't have a credit card. Never own one. Well, it's, it's time. It's time. There tends to be a stigma of surrounding credit, which I don't quite understand because cash is king, but credit is power. And again, what do we call power? What do I define as power? Power is the ability to change. So with credit, you can change your life. And I'm a firm believer, like, yeah, some people are going to use credit to just, you know, stun on people, front, get some nice clothes, get a nice car. That's cool. But <clears throat> I'm a firm believer that credit should be used to build wealth because that's what the wealthy do. The wealthy use other people's money to build wealth while they save their own money and invest their own money. So you got to use credit and you got to build credit. So with that being said, if you don't have a credit card, you're missing out because that you're, the most important factor of your credit is that payment history. So you got to, you have to make payments because it's like muscle. You got to do those reps because if you don't do the reps, you're not going to build any muscle. And it's the same with credit. If you don't make any monthly payments, you're not going to build any muscle. But on top of that, 30% of your credit score, which on a scale from 300 to 850, <coughs> 168 points on your credit report are going to come from you using revolving credit, which is credit cards, lines of credit, trade lines, and keeping those ratios below 30% of the max. And so if you don't have credit cards, a, a third of your credit report, your, your credit can't be that great because a third of your, you're not getting points for a third of your credit activity. So get a credit card. If you're watching right now, I'm going to give you a cheat code. This is typically reserved for people that go through my housing counseling 101, but I'm going to give it to you all because, hey, we here. That's what I'm here for. Kickoff.com, K-I-K-O-F-F.com. One of the best ways that I've seen to get started building your credit today. K-I-K-O-F-F.com, kickoff.com. I've been using Kickoff for about three years now. Um, what it is, it's a service. There's no credit check, no, no monthly fees, no interest. They're going to give you a line of credit up to 750 bucks. You're going to go to their e-store, buy an e-book, okay, sign up for one of their plans. What I did was I bought a I bought an e-book. I spent $28 with their credit card on the on their website, $20 for an e-book. I paid $2 a month auto pay for 10 months. Okay, so what did that do for my credit? Boom. Help me build credit three at least three different ways. One, I'm making a payment every month. It doesn't matter if it's $2, 20, 200, 2000. The fact that I'm making a payment each month is is giving me points. 35% of my credit score is payment history. All right, so that's the first point. The second point is, uh, at this point, it was a $500 line of credit. I'm only using $20 out of $500 at most. So that means at most, my utilization ratio was at 4%. 4%, okay? So when it comes to utilization, you want to keep that your, your credit balance is below 30% of the maximum. Mine was at four. To get the most points that you that you can get for using credit, you want to keep those revolving accounts below 10% of the max. So boom, payment history, and two, boom, utilization ratio, 4%. And then, I'm for three, four years in kickoff now. So the older the account is, remember, the older the account is, the more points it's going to be worth. And so my people, go get you a kickoff, open it up tonight. If you don't have a credit, let's take some steps. Knowledge is power, power is change, but you got to be courageous with change. You got to be bold, okay? And you got to be brave and you got to be responsible. And a good place to start is kickoff. I mean, $2 a month, auto pay it, put it on autopilot. That's a good place to start, but that was a good one. Okay, here we go, here we go. Okay, good question right here. What is the minimum credit scores that lenders will use, will consider to approve you. Um, so I kind of went over just a little bit. I, I touched on it briefly. Minimum credit scores, all right? Boom. 500, you could do it with a 500. Would I do it with a 500? No, because it's going to be a pain in the butt. It's going to be like jumping through rings of fire to make it happen. I'm like what Kanye say, don't rush to get grown, drive slow, homie. Build your castle on solid rock, not, not sand. If you got a 500 credit score, you probably need to prioritize some other other aspects of your finances versus buying a house. What I will say, 
I have I have a lender that can do a 600 middle credit score. And when I say middle credit score, I'm specifically saying your FICO 5, 4, and 2 scores. That's what lenders look at, FICO 5, FICO 4, FICO 2. If you want to see these scores specifically, go to myfico.com. Um, but the lender's going to look at the highest score, they're going to look at the lowest score, and they're going to get rid of them. They don't count. They're only going to go with that score in the middle, and that score in the middle needs to be over 600 to get your foot through the door. Over 620, you start getting access to like the zero down loans. Over 640, you get access to the better, most options, over 640. So 600, 640. Um, the higher your score, the lower your interest, but at the same time, it's really not... It's not even that. It's not even the lower the interest. It's the lower the fees. We there, we have an issue in America with mortgage financing, where you know the people that need the most help tend to get taxed the most with loan level price adjustments. So this is something that you know my organization NARAB is fighting at the federal level and advocating for our communities. But until then, just know that the lower your credit score, the bigger bigger risk you're going to be to the banks. And if you're a bigger risk to the banks, they're going to make you pay for it. But I would not let that stop me from becoming a homeowner. Because you can always refinance. You know, refinancing means um, when the credit, when the when the interest rates go down, and you can have the opportunity to get a lower interest rate, refinance your loan. They're going to pay you off. They're going to pay you whatever your home is worth. The difference between what it, what your loan is and what they say it's worth now, and um, start the loan over. So you can get a lower interest rate, which means you have a lower monthly payment, and um, you get some cash to work with too. Um, yeah. Good stuff. That's good stuff. That's good stuff. If you in the building, say something. Because I got nine people, and I don't know who's watching. Like I said, another thing, if, if you're finding value in this, do me a favor. Go add three people. Add three people to the group. Let's grow this group. Let's blow it up. Because it's a movement, y'all. It's a movement. It's a movement. You know, we liberating our families. We building foundations out here. You know, we putting our families in place to do some things that we never done before. So let's get it. You know, don't be stingy. Sharing is caring. Sharing is caring. All right, let's see who else. Let's see. Okay. What do you recommend? Conventional and VA. What do I recommend between these two? Honestly, it's a lot of factors. I, I can't say that I recommend one over the other. It just depends. Everybody, everybody's situation is different. That's the that's the first thing that comes to buying a house. You can listen to one person what their story, but yours could be totally different. Uh, but I can tell you, let's talk about the the benefits of both, right? So I say all that to say, my favorite loan is going to be a conventional loan. It's going to be conventional all day because for one, conventional, it's just less hassle. A conventional loan is just a normal loan from the bank. There's no government involvement. With no government involvement, that means there's less hassle. That means that you can close sooner. Um, drawbacks to to the uh, conventional loan, and this just depends on the loan too. Because I say conventional, but a conventional loan is not monolithic. There are thousands of conventional loans. Um, my favorite conventional loan is a community mortgage that a couple of small banks here, local banks have. You can buy a house with no money down, no down payment. No private mortgage insurance. Mortgage insurance. I used the loan. I only had to spend um, two hundred dollars at the closing table. Two hundred and ten dollars when I went to buy my house. My cash to bring the clothes. Two hundred and ten dollars and some change. Okay, with a conventional loan, you can't beat it. Um, but that's just that's the community mortgage. If you don't qualify for that program. You can qualify if you don't qualify for that program. If you buy a home in a low to moderate income census tract, you can still take advantage of this community mortgage. If you're not doing that, conventional loans at, at least you're gonna have to bring three percent because you can go Freddie Mac or Fannie Mae. Those are conventional. Um, but if you go with other conventionals, they can be five, ten, twenty percent down. Just depends. The VA though, if you have access to the VA loan. I would say use it because a VA is no money down. It's for our veterans. The VA stands for the Veterans Administration. It's a part of the GI Bill, which gives our veterans the benefits that they deserve in this country. And one of those are zero down loans, zero down loans. But again, the VA loan does have that stigma of being a government loan. And with a government loan, 
comes a government inspection. And in addition to a government inspection, VA loans require the seller to pay for a pest inspection for the buyer. So a lot of sellers just don't want to deal with it. So it really depends on how competitive the market is and specifically how competitive the house is that you're bidding on because if the seller doesn't have any other options, that VA loan is going to look great. But if a VA loan is competing against the conventional, the seller is probably going to pick that conventional unless they got a very soft spot for veterans. I have seen that before where I've seen a seller pick a higher a higher offer for a, a, a veteran's veterans loan because they had a special place in their heart for the veterans. So ultimately, I'm a firm believer at the end of the day that what's for you is what's for you. And as long as you put your best foot forward, no matter what loan it is, you get the loan that's going to work for you and you put it out there because at the end of the day, what's for you is for you. And that's a very good question. Thank you for asking that. Great question. Okay, we got another question. We got another question. I heard that college can count towards employment for a mortgage. Is that true? So here's the deal. We talk about employment, right? What do you need? What do you need to get a mortgage? Two years W-2s. Two years W-2s to get a mortgage, y'all. So how can you have two years of W-2s if you just spent the four in college? It's tough, right? Well, never fear because if you if you graduated now, you have to complete your program. If you complete your program and within the if you completed your program within the last year and you have a job within your career field, there are lenders who are lenient enough to allow you to purchase that property despite not having two years of W twos. So yes, it depends on the lender. I know a couple that if you graduated from your program, you can go ahead and they allow you to purchase that property despite you you know, not having two years of W-2. So, good question. Thank you. Thank you, Relly Rail. Great question. Let's see. Okay, so here's, we got another question about credit. Ashley got the good questions. Let's go. Let's go. Uh, let's go. Let's go. So, if it's a good thing to have a credit card, what should I look at when applying for one? It depends on what your credit score is. I mean, here's the deal. I mean, if you don't have any credit, just get you a credit card, okay? The lower, and I'm not even going to say the lower the monthly payment, the better. You you just want cards right now. I would say if you don't have any credit, you want to, if you want to get to like the 800 club, you want an 850, you're going to want to have like 12 to 15 different lines of credit open. Right now, you're starting off with one, two, three, you know? So just open it. <clears throat> interest, you only pay interest if you keep, if you keep a balance. So with that being said, don't keep a balance. Keep your balance low. What I tell people to do when you get a credit card, you got Netflix, okay, bet. The only thing you're gonna put on this credit card is Netflix and you're gonna auto pay Netflix on this card and then you're gonna auto pay this card from your bank account every month. So now you're building credit on clock, it's like clockwork. Keep the balance low, make your payments every month. Okay, that's what it comes down to because the credit card can be 100% interest, but if you if you carry a balance, yeah, it's going to affect you. Don't carry a balance on the credit card. You don't get credit cards because you need them. Do they come in do they come in handy in times of emergency? Absolutely. But be, you shouldn't be going to your credit card in case of emergencies because you should have your savings built up in case of emergencies. Credit is to build wealth with. Credit is to purchase assets with. That's what it should be used for. Credit should be used to purchase assets. Credit should not be used to save you. I understand if you have to use credit to save you because it's, it's there. But, you know, the mentality, the, psych, the psychology behind it, change the mindset, change the perspective, see tangible results in your life. Savings, credit. All right. <clears throat> so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just get it. Get the credit. My favorite, one of my favorite credit cards is my Apple card. I love it. I love it. It just it makes me feel rich. <laughs> I love it. Um, it's pretty good. But yeah, just I would say if you don't have any credit right now, Kickoff, you can get two different lines of credit from Kickoff, Revolving and Installment, because they have a credit builder loan. And then I would also use Self Lender, Self.inc, Self.inc. Uh, again, that's another one where they have, you pick how much you want to pay per month, you pay it, at the end of the term, you get a check back with the money that you paid, but every month that went on your credit report like you paid back a loan. Open up two to three credit credit accounts, put them on auto pay, put them on auto pay, and take your hands off. Build that credit. 
All right, let's go. Sherelle says the two to one buy down is a type of financing, but I want to know if this is available for new homeowners. <clears throat> Sherelle, I'm going to do some research on that. Can I give that website again, please? I've given a bunch of websites. Kickoff.com, kickoff, K I K O F F.com. That's one of my favorite starter credit starter accounts. It's cheap. Kickoff.com. We have um, Self Lender. Self.inc is another easy credit builder account. Um, and NIDLucasCounty.com, which is at the bottom here, is where you can sign up for free counseling, housing counseling. You can register for our classes, all of that good stuff. Let's go. MyFICO.com. Yeah, that one. Thank you, Tiffany. MyFICO.com. MyFICO.com. When I, yeah, when I was focused on buying my house and I was aggressive with building my credit, MyFICO.com was my favorite tool because it showed me about 30 different credit, credit scores. You got a lot of credit scores, y'all. Um, and I guess I can touch on it since we're on, the, we're on the topic of it. I use Credit Karma. I use MyFICO. I use Credit Sesame. I use Capital One. Um, I used Experian. I was thirsty. I was looking at my credit on every platform. Um, but what do lenders look for? They look at your FICO scores, specifically FICO 5, 4, and 2. You have credit scores for, for your department store cards, credit scores for your bank cards, credit scores for your auto loans, credit scores for your mortgage loans, and you got three versions of each. So it just it adds up. My FICO is going to show you all of those. It does come with a cost, but hey, it's great. I love it. I love it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. What I recommend this is from IKEA. Would you recommend using high yield savings accounts at, as a way to save for future down payment? I mean, here's the deal with that. <clears throat> you can never go wrong with a high yield savings account because this is a savings, right? This is not for investment. And when you're saving money, the goal of saving money is to put your money somewhere where there's low risk. And so a high yield savings account, we say high yield, but it's really not that high of yield compared to other forms of, I guess in regards to saving, eh. but you're saving. So it shouldn't be, you, you shouldn't expect a huge return if you're saving money. Um, I would actually, Recommend if if I'm saving money, eh, you can you can't be the you know high yield savings account. But there's other things like um, Ohio has a tax defer. It's a tax uh, tax shelter down payment savings. Uh, it's almost like a, a IRA for down payment, almost like a, a, a SCP or five two nine where you can put money away tax free for your down payment. So you have that, but you can't go wrong with that. So would I recommend it? Yeah, I would recommend it. Um, because you're saving money. Now, if it was about investing money, nah, I can think of better places to keep my money. But for savings, you want your savings to be safe, low risk. You can't beat that. You cannot beat that. All right, let's see. What if you want to become an investor? My guy, Cedric. Let's see. What if you want to become an investor? Well, I'll say this. The best thing you can do if you want to become an investor, first and foremost, own your own home. That's the the most Americans, the majority of wealth in America come from somebody, it comes from somebody living in a home that they own. That's where the majority of wealth in America is. That's where the majority of net worth is. Yeah, it's not sexy. Yeah, it's not get rich quick. But that move right there will set you up for life and into retirement just by owning the home that you live in. Um, now, Say for instance, you own your home. You wanna you wanna go invest in another property. Now there's ways to do it. There's a lot of different strategies. It's a thousand ways to skin a cat. But ultimately, you gotta research and do what's best for you. Some people they do what's called the Burr method, which they look for deals, and a deal is just based off of um, you know after repair value and cost of entry. But they look for deals. And then they have relationships with with lenders, private money. And what they do is they find the deal. Oh, and they, then they go to their lender for the private money. The lender will put the money up for them to purchase and renovate the property. So that's what they do. They'll buy it, they'll renovate it, and then they rent it out. 
So now, you know, they bought the property, they've increased the value, and they put a renter into the property. So now what they'll go do is get that home financed, meaning they take a mortgage out on it. So yeah, they take a mortgage out on the house. That bank is going to give them what that home is worth, what it appraises for in straight up cash. And now they have a home that has someone living in it, paying the mortgage on the property. And now they're sitting with all this cash that they can go use to do another house. So that's called the Burr Method. Buy, renovate, rent, refinance. And they do it over and over and over and over until they're sitting on a lot of doors. Uh, that's one way to do it. Some people use their own money, which I'm not a fan. Why would I use my own money when I can use somebody else's money? I'll take my money and invest my own money and use somebody else's money to build wealth. That's just me, though. Um, but that's that's one of the most common ways to build wealth through real estate is through that bird method, using private money, building relationships, knowing how to analyze deals, knowing how to find and generate these deals, um, and then executing. And it's not easy. I make it sound easy. It's not, but hey. But best thing you can do, own your home. And aside from that, um, do the bird method, or you can just stack up some bread for a down payment. Go get a loan. You can take out a loan, 20% down to go buy a second property. You can do that, as long as it's within your debt to income ratio. So I can teach a whole class on real estate investment. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Okay. MyFICO.com, Ashley, is the best one. Website to monitor your credit. What's the best type of mortgage to apply for? The best mortgage to apply for is the one that fits your fits your financial profile. And that just depends on you. You know, do you what's your credit score? How much income do you make? Uh, what's your debt load? How much debt do you have? You know, so it's kind of hard to say. I say go with the loan that's going to help you buy a house with the least amount of money. With the least amount of money down. The buy the, use the loan that's going to keep the most money in your pocket. Use a loan that's going to help you get through the process the smoothest. But I can go into detail when you apply, when you register for a housing counseling session and we sit down and break it down. So with that being said, y'all, I'm here for y'all. This is what I do. If you found value in this, please, please, please add a few people to this group because it's invite only. I'm not out here pumping it, you know, not too much at least. Um, and I'll be coming back, you know, weekly with exclusive content just for you all straight, straight up like that. So um, you know who it is and what it be. This is Rob P. N.I.D. Um, I am a I am a housing counselor, certified branch office manager, but I'm also a real estate broker with EXP. And through EXP, me and my team of agents, we help people in the home ownership. So, and I also help people get into the real estate business. So, if anyone's interested in becoming a real tour, a real TIS, I'd love to talk to you about that. If you are you know anyone that has property that they would like to liquidate, they want to move, they want to sell, they want to get top dollar. That's my favorite thing to do. I love helping families in the home ownership, but also helping people liquidate and move, you know, because I get people the most money that, that I can get them in the fastest time with my marketing, man. My marketing game is crazy when it comes to this property. So if you know anybody I can help, send them my way, y'all. Hit the links in the bio. Register for a one-on-one. Hit the link in the bio. Register for our home buyer workshop. Hold up, hold up. Before I get up out of here, home buyer workshop. Man, wait, not that. I'm back. All right, here we go. Home buyer workshop. It's this uh the 28th, y'all. Fourth Saturday. Be there or be square. It's going down. It's going wait. There we go. It's going down. Be there or be square. But I appreciate y'all rocking with me. I'll be back next week. Let me see. What's what do I have next? What do I have for us next Wednesday? Did you all like this live? Like, did y'all did you find value in this? I hope you found value. But with that being said, next week I'll be coming on Wednesday talking about credit improvement. So I'll just be talking specifically about, you know, what you can do to build credit um, next Wednesday. I'll pump it ahead of time so you all know. I know I kind of sprung this one up on you, but sometimes that's how I get down. It'd be a lot, y'all. It'd be a lot. But with that being said, I'm out. I love y'all. Peace.